Cell phones are the most powerful tracking devices ever created. They can be used by governments and corporations to know where people are in real time, listen to their conversations through the microphone, and see what's going on around them through the camera. It's important to do everything that you can to reduce how closely you're being tracked, not just for your own freedom and liberty, but also to protect your identity. Because while all of these corporations are so focused on collecting as much data as they can about you as possible, they're doing a horrible job of securing it once they have it. Almost every single day we're hearing about some company getting hacked and having all of the personal data of their customers leaked onto the internet. All companies from social media to cellular carriers and even public and government owned entities are guilty of this. So I'm going to show you how to mitigate the smartphone, the primary point of data collection in your life. So to start off, you're going to need to get a new smartphone because all phones come with an IMEI, which uniquely identifies that device. So this number is going to be associated to everything that you've done on your phone already. The IMEI and or serial number also gets scanned whenever you purchase a phone, whether you buy it in person or online. So you're going to want to use cash for the purchase and not a credit card or anything that's going to have your name on it. This should also go without saying, but don't finance your phone through a carrier because that's going to require you to give them your name, address, and financial details to open a line of credit with them. So if you wanna get a brand new phone, buy it unlocked from the manufacturer with cash. Another option that I really recommend is to get a used phone from someone else, which can save you a whole lot of money and it also reduces e-waste. Uh, try to find someone, ideally a town or two over, on Craigslist to buy the phone from them with cash. I wouldn't really recommend buying it from somebody close to you, like a friend or relative, because that's going to be pretty easy to trace back to you. Now, as for the type of phone to purchase, ideally you're going to want an Android phone that you can root and de-Google because we want to mitigate big tech tracking us as well as government tracking us. In companies like Google, Samsung, Sony, and Apple, they all install spyware on their phones by default. Uh, if you aren't tech savvy enough to root and de-Google a phone yourself, you may be able to find someone to help you do it, or you could purchase a phone that ships with a private operating system by default, like the Pine phone or the Librem 5 phone. One final important note is that if you're going to root and de-Google the phone yourself at home, make sure that you have Wi-Fi turned off on the new phone you purchased. Uh, whenever that phone is in or around your house and especially never connect it to your Wi-Fi. Also, do not connect your phone to any devices that have Windows or Mac OS running on them. I'll go over why at the end of this video. Now that you have a privately obtained phone with a private operating system, it's time to get private cell service. Now this part of the video is going to mostly apply to Americans because in most countries, they require you to show ID whenever you activate any kind of cellular service. So for people in those countries, your only other option would be to get somebody else who you trust to go and get the SIM card for you, uh, or you can purchase a pre-activated SIM card for cash that works uh, in your home country online. Apparently there's services that offer that, uh, but I have no idea how reliable the SIM cards are. But here in America, you're not required to give an ID to get cell phone service. You don't need to give an address for the service and you don't need to use your real name and you can pay in cash for the service. Uh, I would also recommend if you're going to do it this way to add a few months of credit to your account in cash because the only way to continuously pay this is to go to the cell phone store and pay in cash. So that'll save you a couple of trips. Another option if you don't need to use a whole lot of data is to just get prepaid phones. Uh, so with these, you're not paying month to month like you would with standard cell phone service. You're just paying for a certain amount of data. Usually if you stay under four or six gigabytes or so, uh, this ends up being cheaper than paying month to month for an unlimited plan.
Now that you have a private phone and SIM card, don't put the SIM in the phone just yet. You're going to want to make sure you activate that in a secure way. You've already put so much effort into keeping personal information away from this device, so you don't want to ruin it by activating it near your house or activating it when your other cell phone is in your pocket because if a new phone comes online at your home address or if it comes online right on top of this phone that's already identified as yours, then the cellular company is going to assume that new phone is yours also. I recommend activating the new phone somewhere that has a lot of people, like in a fairly public place, but that doesn't also have too many security cameras. So public park or beach would probably be ideal and leave your old phone at home when you go to that place to activate it. So congratulations, you now know how to get a private smartphone and cellular service. So now let's go over some operational security tips to keep things that way. You don't want to associate this phone with any of your personal information. You don't want to log into any emails or accounts that you have created previously. Instead, you want to be creating new ones from this phone. Uh, this should also go without saying, but don't go taking selfies and posting to social media from this phone. That's going to ruin your OPSEC. Uh, it's also a good idea to not consume the same kind of media on this phone or at all through streaming services because those can uniquely identify you as well. Like there's a good chance if you look at all of these specific things you watch on Spotify or YouTube, they're probably uh, different than other people. So if you must consume media on this phone, make sure that you download it on a separate device and then load it onto that phone. You should also avoid any applications and services that will try to track you. So don't use anything made by Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, and so on. If you de-googled your phone, you shouldn't have the Google Play Store on it anyway. So if you just stick to apps that you can get in the F-Droid store, you should be relatively safe. And you should also keep your private phone disabled and disconnected from any networks whenever you have it near your home, your place of work, or when you have your old smartphone near you. You should also disconnect the private phone when you're in your car if it has built-in GPS, satellite radio, um, you know, anything. You want to keep your private phone away from any non-private devices that are connecting to any kind of network. Because from the cellular company's point of view, they can see exactly where you are in the world when your old phone is connected to cellular towers or when your satellite radio goes and pings the satellite. Uh, even if the SIM is removed and cellular service is off on your device, it can still make E911 calls. So it's still able to ping cell towers. Um, so if they see that old cell phone or that satellite radio side by side with some anonymous cell phone, that's obviously not going to remain anonymous for very long. So to prevent this, you can make sure that you only have one device on your person at any given time. Uh, and you should also start incorporating the use of Faraday containers, or if you want a cheaper alternative, tinfoil. Now, we aren't going to be putting the tinfoil on our heads to try and block reptilian mind control waves, but rather we're going to be using it to block electromagnetic signals to our phone. This is including cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and radio signals. You can try this at home, connect your phone to a Bluetooth speaker while you're streaming something, and the moment that your phone is wrapped in tinfoil, the connection is going to drop. So while your private phone is charging or it is in your home at rest, keep it in a Faraday container. Last, we'll talk about connecting your phone to other devices. So this usually tends to be necessary in order to root your phone. Uh, you want to make sure that whatever device you are connecting it to isn't going to be sending information about your private phone somewhere. So this is why I don't recommend using Windows to root your phone. Um, because Microsoft is collecting data about any device that connects to your window machine as well as any applications that you run in Windows. So for rooting and loading any kind of media onto your phone, I would recommend using a free open source GNU Linux distro. 
Uh, so there you go. That's how to obtain and use a private smartphone. Be sure to like and share the video, not from your private smartphone, of course, to help other people find it and rid themselves of corporate tracking as well.